Hi, I'm John. This is my show, An American Scheme, where I'm proving that Diana Ross is Michael Jackson's actual mother. So one of the big things right now, upon with all the evidence that I have, one of the big things that I'm proving is that the actual story about Diana Ross uh, discovering the Jacksons is a very, very valid story, and she's the actual instrument not even if you look at her as like being Michael's mother, when you actually just look at the history, she's the integral instrument that does everything with the Jacksons. She was the one. And the beginning story is the whole thing, they emphasized that and they sold it as Diana Ross presents the Jacksons and everything with that. But then what happened is throughout time, that story was changed and they stopped saying that Diana was the one. They altered that story and even Michael. Michael said, Diana didn't discover us. She didn't have anything to do with this. And then he says, the person asked him in that interview, well, who? And then he says, Bobby Taylor. He then brings out the name Bobby Taylor. And it's like, okay, this is the thing about what I'm emphasizing. The real story in the beginning is Diana Ross. But for some reason, that was switched where they dropped it off where everybody then, when you talk about Barry Gordy, Smokey Robinson, Diana Ross, Michael Jackson, all of them, and even in the Jacksons movie with the Susan DePass, they bring her in and the big part of the story, everybody then just drops off the reality of the Diana Ross part and they started talking about this other thing. They morphed it into the uh, Bobby Taylor story. And then when I was first doing my most real solid research, I was on the Bobby Taylor story. But then as I got even deeper, I realized, no, Diana was even before that. And this is here, this is the Jackson 5 cartoon. This is the very first episode. So right here, see where it says, it all started with, okay? This is the very beginning. So. Now watch what they say here, and so this is the beginning, so this aired, the first airing of this was in September 11th of 1971, okay, that was when this first aired, which uh, the Jacksons would be um, on Ed Sullivan in, in late of, six, late of six, I think it's actually December of 69, so say like right there at 1970, and then this is airing in uh, late 1971. So say basically a, bit, a basic gap of about two years from when the Jacksons first hit the scene to when they have a cartoon, and this was a Saturday morning cartoon. So if you people are not from America or not older, like when I was a child, I would wake up in the morning on Saturday morning because you would go to school during the week. You go Monday through Friday, you go to school. And then on Saturday morning, what they would do is Saturday morning was the Saturday morning cartoon day. You would turn on all the television stations in the morning on Saturday mornings and they'd have all the best cartoons. It was it was great. It was ch kids heaven, right? <laughs> right. So the Saturday morning cartoons, that was what it was about in America. And then so I read, I looked about this a little information. So the Jackson 5 was a Saturday morning cartoon. OK, it would have ran in that in that time time slot. And then um, what I'm saying here is from when they came out, see the back then you would have seen the Jacksons like on the Ed Sullivan show, okay? Then maybe if you were following them, maybe you were seeing some photographs of them in papers. And then maybe if you were really lucky, maybe you got to see them actually perform on a concert. But, you know, you're in a concert hall. They're up there. I mean, you know, how close are you actually and everything? So what I'm saying is from the point point when the Jacksons get on the scene to, well, to where the time this cartoon starts, that's just like two years. So how familiar could the public have became with the Jacksons in that two year period of time when it's not like in the modern day where we have all the access to everything, right? So in that time, how familiar could you have been? So what I'm saying is that this cartoon would have been the actual thing that actually familiarized when the people were living at that time the idea of what they actually based their Jacksons, the whole family thing, the whole thing where it really forced and it really got into them. I'm saying it was this cartoon that would have done it. And so we look at right here. So when you see the cartoon, everything about what they're doing is branding. The, and when I'm watching it, it's like what they're doing is you're seeing the branding of the Jacksons image. The family image of the Jacksons is massive to what they're doing here.
sick because of a snake. <laughs> you see, I'm Michael Jackson. And a couple of years ago, me and my big brothers, Marlon, Jermaine, Tito, and Jackson, lived kind of square and quiet back home in Gary, Indiana. And one day, Miss Diana Ross herself came to town to sing a concert. So right there, First he brands him, hi, I'm Michael Jackson, and these are my brothers, okay? So right there, the branding of the family, to Michael, to the family, okay? The instant, like right off the bat, this is what they're doing. That's why I say it was so severe, the branding that they did for Michael to the Jackson 5, and the reason they did it so severely like that was because he wasn't a Jackson, and they all knew it. Like I said, Barry Gordy, Smokey, Diana, and then, and then Joe and Catherine, all of them, everybody, they all the key ones there they all know michael's not so when this branding is taking place they're all in it saying yeah they, everybody knows what's going on and why they're doing this so they're branding michael into the jacksons severely not only did they brand him into the jacksons they branded him into the uh that we started in gary indiana they they talk about the house there and again and he says we were living uh poor and square or something like that and uh so the whole thing about him growing up there the whole it's branded just from that little thing boom you've got michael with his brothers then they're all in a band now because they came from Gary, Indiana. But then what it states right there, he says, one day in Gary, Indiana, Diana Ross came to do a show. And this is in the cartoon. That's what I'm saying is that this was the way that they were promoting. They were telling that form of the true story that Diana Ross was right there at the beginning with the Jacksons because, because she was going to look for Michael. That's the whole thing. She was uh, purposely going in places where she could see Michael and then so because of that it put her in places where they knew that uh, you could document her being in places with Michael Jackson so what I'm thinking is that they had to cover up for that so in the beginning that's why they use the Diana Ross excuses that Diana Ross discovers the Michael Jackson what they're probably doing is they knew that there was a lot of actual evidence like what I'm going into now. They knew that there was evidence tying Diana Ross to, to the Michael before the Motown stuff. So what they did to cover that up was they said Diana Ross discovers the Jacksons. They used that as the excuse. But then as time went on, um, they went away from that because then they didn't want you to actually, they didn't want, they've, they've got away from it. It's, they're in the clear. All they need to do is drop off that Diana Ross thing, slip it into the Bobby Taylor discovered the Jacksons. So nobody is talking about the discovery of the, you're not talking about Diana Ross before Bobby Taylor anymore, which this cartoon, like right here, Diana Ross comes. So like right there, most people would just see, would not think anything about that. Like Diana Ross came to our town, Gary, Indiana. Like right there, most people, you just would not think any, it just, it would just go right by you, wouldn't really think of it. But me, I'm like, well, there it is again. Right when they're saying, right at the beginning, the key essential thing is that Diana's in Gary, Indiana at the concert that the Jacksons do before they go to Chicago and play with Bobby Taylor at the Regal Theater. This is what I've proven, hardcore. And then it comes up again here. In the very beginning, that's the story that they were stating. And like I'm saying, the reason that they're stating that now, it looks to me that they had to do it because there was too much evidence showing that Diana Ross was interacting with Michael Jackson before he came to Motown. There was real evidence of that. There would have been eyewitnesses to that. So how do they stop all of that happen? Boom, the Diana Ross discovers the Jackson. It, it stops all of that ha from happening, right? It gives a reason why she's there and why all of that stuff. And it worked because it totally worked, then boom. Then what do they do? They brand the Michael into the Jacksons family with a Saturday morning cartoon. So the real first introductions that the public is getting of the Jacksons is this cartoon. And it's a cartoon. So they're not actually, they're, they're cartoon characters. So think about the branding of how they did the imagery into the public's eyes through the cartoon. And then the, I read this stuff, the actual thing was the cartoon characters' voices are not the Jacksons, they're actors. So there they got to manipulate the voices with the actors uh, leading to the Jacksons to get them to uh, be the way they wanted. Then all they did was use the, the music from the Jacksons' music. So the reality of this cartoon, the Jacksons didn't actually do anything for this cartoon. They did like publicity, some photo shoots, stuff like that. But in reality, they didn't do any of the voices for the kids. They didn't, uh, the concerts were uh, pre-recorded concert scenes. And the, but, but Diana Ross, 
She appeared in one episode and she used her voice. There was one little thing about that that's weird. She actually used her voice. In this episode, it's her actual voice. So there was just a weird little thing about that, you know, that Diana Ross did. Her voice is actually there. Yeah, it's just weird. I guess because her voice was so recognizable. See, that's the thing with the kids. See, the kids, they're, they're, they're branding the voices to get them to be where they want to be. And, and Michael's young, so they understand that the branding of that is going to be, they can uh, alter it and do what they want. Their brand. But Diana Ross, she's already established and she has a voice. She wasn't going to stand for them to say, she's like, you're not y'all using somebody else's voice on mine. You know, it's one episode. I'll do it. You know, I'll, I'll use my own voice because her voice is already established. Where Michael had a young voice and they understood that it was more about branding Michael to the Jacksons. It's not about branding his voice. That's why they used actors for the voices and stuff. So, um, so like I said, this is another thing here. I go, there's Diana Ross. And this is the actual story that they were telling on the cartoon in Gary, Indiana. Just the fact that she's in Gary, Indiana before the Jacksons go to Motown. At any point, at any point, the fact that Diana Ross is in Gary, Indiana and, and, and where the Jacksons are at. They actually perform together at the same place. Just the fact that that ever happened to me, it's like, geez, that is a big deal. It's a big deal because the story about what they all tell now is the Bobby Taylor stuff. And then when you hear Diana and Smokey, they say, oh, the first times I met Michael was at, at uh, Barry Gordy's pool house party. That That's where they both say. But no, they were both at the actual audition. And then, but they're altering now. They stay, they, but they've all went to the foreman. You can tell that they've all are telling the same form of the lie the, the way it was in the beginning you can see how it morphed now to where they're all started telling the different lie why would they all start telling the same lie later they were all telling the same lie in the beginning they all morphed it into the same lie later because they all know what the lie means and they're all involved in it you know okay talk to you later bye